Hi, this is Andrew with Askimo TV, and I'm really happy to be interviewing Dr. Sivan Arbach. She's trained in child development, psychology, education, and special education, and is one of the nation's leading professionals on children's play and educational toys. She's known as Dr. Toy and is the author of Smart Play, Smart Toys, How to Raise a Child with a High PQ, Play Quotient. Dr. Toy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Andrew, for having me. Uh, play and toys are one of my most favorite subjects, and I'm delighted to share my information with you today. It's going to be a fun topic and really interesting, and we're going to talk about the future of toys. Is the toy industry keeping up with the increasing awareness of the environment, and what is the future of green toys? Well, it's a very important subject. Ecologically friendly toys are the new direction. Uh, started about 10 years ago, I started uh, identifying uh, green toys and providing the Dr. Toy seal of approval on green toys and green companies, uh, companies that were making a difference in their company themselves where they were producing it, becoming more ecologically friendly, more aware of turning off the light bulbs when they weren't in use and making materials that make sense, uh, like organic and chemical-free uh, materials. Um, there are many companies now practicing green principles. They're becoming more aware of it and uh, producing products that are earth-friendly and safe for children and the planet at the same time. <clears throat> Will, will technology be seen in all toys in the future to some extent? Well, I hope not. Um, I, <laughs> as much as I appreciate and uh, respect the advances of technology, uh, every toy was not meant to be connected with a chip. Uh, we want to turn on the child's imagination, their creativity. Uh, while technology is fun and valuable, it's important that the child use their own imagination and not the programmer. Um, they need to explore, they need to invent, they need to create, and not depend on electronics to entertain them. You know, when there's an electric shortage, you still want to turn on your imagination. Uh, it's better that they learn how to uh, grow vegetables and have gardens and learn how to stay in touch with nature and you obviously don't need an iPad or an iPhone when you're out in the middle of the garden. Um, it's important to turn off and turn on your mind and your imagination and play. Are there any toys that risk losing their function if they become technology-based? Well, yes, because um, you can't plug in Play-Doh or crayons. Um, you don't want everything to be electrified. Um, your children can use their imagination when they're making pictures or putting their pictures up on the wall, um, and you reflect on their uh, growth and development through watching them uh, create artwork um, and doing clay and Play-Doh, using their imagination, using construction sets, using puzzles, board games. Um, children learn through these direct experiences. Um, you don't want to go from crib to chip. Uh, you want to uh, have a lot of experiences in between. And children uh, benefit when they have to make something with a cardboard box. It helps them to use their imagination. So uh, there needs to be balance between the two, technology and toys, not one or the other. And an appreciation and a respect for both of them is very important. Um, as children spend more and more time in front of a screen, what stance should the television industry take? Are they becoming more responsible for educating a child and teaching them what it means to play? Well, it's very important that um, uh, television is responsible as a medium. Uh, that they're respectful of children and have appropriate materials. Um, programs like Sesame Street, I approved the first grant for Sesame Street when it first started, and uh, I, I respect that program greatly in terms of all the things that they've done. 
but part of what was important was bringing parents involved in it right from the beginning, and that was one thing I made a contribution about. It's important that the parent watches the show with the child and then discusses it, develop activities to use afterward, that the television program offers suggestions to parents and things that they can do with their child about the program itself. There needs to be a balance between toys and technology, and not too much of one or the other. When you turn off the TV or turn off the technology, you're giving the child an opportunity to think, to experience, and become more lively themselves. So you've got to balance it out. Sometimes pediatricians would prefer there not to be any screen time for children under the age of two, for example. The TV shouldn't be a babysitter, but used appropriately for children to give them some new information and opportunities. I think toys and technology should dance together, not step on each other's toes. Dr. Toy, I really have to say it was a pleasure to meet you, and a very interesting topic to talk about, and thank you so much for contributing to ASCMO TV. We really appreciate it. Well, I've been enjoying every minute being with you, and have a great deal of value in talking about play and toys, and I hope that you have a very playful day. And don't forget to play. I will. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Toy. Thank you.